Hello and welcome to Watch Me Fly. In this video, I'm going to be walking through all the features of Balloon Live, so the Balloon Live app and the sensor, and the features of Watch Me Fly that you'll be using during your competitions as a competition pilot. The first thing we're going to do is show you how to register for a Balloon Live competition in the Balloon Live app. I'm going to demonstrate this using my iPad because it's a bit easier to see some of the functions. So first open up the iPad and it's always a good idea to check that you're running the latest version of the app. And you can see the version number there under the logo in the top left corner. Just cross-reference with that with the balloonlive.org website to check you are running the latest version. Now you want to log in and to do that, click on the profile image in the top right hand corner and choose log in. That will then allow you to log in using your Watch Me Fly login details. If you're not a member of Watch Me Fly, please go to watchmefly.net and sign up. Once you've logged in using those details, you'll be given the option to select a competition. If you click on those available competitions, it will list all of the competitions in Watch Me Fly that you have been registered for by the event organizers. So here you can see I've got quite a few competitions, but I'm going to scroll down and select the, uh, the 2022 Australian competition. And you can see there it says I have not paid. When I select that, it will prompt me to now pay and it will show me the price in the local currency and I've selected to pay. I go through the payment process using, in this case, Apple Pay, but it also works using Android. And once your payment has been processed, you'll see now that that event has been flagged as paid. And then I can click on that. And now I'm in the 2022 Australian competition uh, event within the Balloon Live app and ready to start tracking. We're now going to connect the Balloon Live app to the Balloon Live sensor. So to do this, we go into positioning devices in the menu, and this will show you if it can see any of the Balloon Live sensors. If it can't, what you want to do is firstly turn on your Balloon Live sensor. To do that, you click on the button at the top and then push the OK button. It will then show you firstly the serial number of that device and then the firmware version that it is running. Once you've done that, you then go back into the app, into that positioning devices section, and the Balloon Live sensor should appear. And you'll see there that it has the serial number of that device it can see. All you need to do is then click on it and say connect, and then your Balloon Live sensor will be connected. Once it's connected, you can go back into the home screen on the app and you should see data coming through from the Balloon Live sensor and that red warning message should disappear. We're now going to walk through how to use the various functions within the Balloon Live app during a flight. So the first thing you want to do is update the flight that you're going to be flying. To do that, click on the top right hand corner on the three dots and select update flight. This will then give you the list of flights that are available. So choose the one that you're about to fly and then the app will be configured with the Q&H and the information about that flight. Okay, now you're ready to start your flight. We recommend you start your flight a few minutes before you actually take off. This allows the app and the sensor to get a fix on your location and just make sure that everything is tracking correctly before you actually take off. To start the flight, click the red button at the bottom and then you'll see that that is replaced by a green drop and declare button. Now you may want to declare a goal. To declare a goal, click on the declare button in the bottom right hand corner and that will first ask you which goal number you wish to choose. Once you do that, you can then enter your eastings and your northings and if the task requires, you can also add your altitude. If you don't require an altitude, simply leave it blank. Once you click that, you can then hit the declare button and the declaration is recorded. You'll see there's a number in the box above. If you click on that number, it will pop up a window and show you all the details of your declarations. To drop a logger mark, click the drop button, select which logger mark you want to drop, and then when you actually are ready to drop that mark, click the big green drop button on the screen. 
That will record the logger mark and you can always click the number above to see the details of that drop. So if you want to drop a second one, click the drop button, select the number, click the big button when you're ready, and again that will record that logger mark has been recorded. Once you've finished your flight, what you then want to do is click on the stop flight button in the top right hand corner on the three dots, and then that will finish your flight. Before you close the app, you need to make sure all the data has been sent to watch me fly for scoring. You'll know that it has been sent when the little icon at the top goes from yellow to white, and that means all data has been sent through and you can shut down the app. Now we'll walk through some of the key functionality that you're going to use as a competition pilot during an event within Watch Me Fly. So I'm here on the home page and when I come in here I'm going to log in as myself and what we can see at the top of the page here is that we have this box that has all the information about the current flight that's being flown. So this is the Australian balloon, sorry the Australian competition. It has flight number one and it's the Tuesday morning flight. I have links here to the task data sheet and the weather sheet. And then on the right hand side I have a post flight checklist that gives me information about the status of the various things I need to do prior to the or after the flight occurs. So firstly we can still we can see that my balloon live app is actually still tracking. This means I have not gone into the app and pressed the stop flight uh, button on my app and the data hasn't all been uploaded. So I'll go and do that in a minute and we'll show you how that changes. Then I've got a link to the flight report form and it says it has not been submitted. And again, we'll walk through that in a minute about how you fill out those flight report forms. It also says that I have some markers that need returning and that's managed by that flight report form because in that flight report form, we'll actually flag whether we've dropped our markers or not. In here, there's also some links to a Google map that will show you your track and all your data points and we'll have a look at that in a minute as well as links to your Balloon Live data so you can go and download the IGC files or the Aussie Explorer files. Alright, so firstly I'm just going to go and stop my, uh, my Balloon Live app and finish my flight so we can see how that changes things. Okay, I've stopped my uh, flight in Balloon Live and now if I refresh this page you'll see that it now says my tracking has finished. We can also see the estimated launch and landing positions and times have been populated. Now these are uh, estimations that are taken from the Balloon Live track and if you ever see these numbers aren't quite correct you can always make a note in your flight report form for the officials to check it. Another way you can check this is by going to the Google Map and when this Google Map loads you'll see that it actually shows the launch position and all your marker drops as well as your landing position. So you can just double check that everything looks correct within that map itself. Okay, so that's kind of the, uh, the post-flight checklist. If I now come in into the flight report form, many of you have used the flight report forms before, but basically what you want to do is firstly you want to populate this with the uh, land owner information. So we might have taken off from Bob Smith's place and you can put their phone number in and their address and any remarks that you want to around that. Then in here you also have all, each of the tasks and you can provide the estimated result, the time of your marker drop and any other comments you wish. And then for any tasks that require a marker, a physical marker drop, you'll also have a uh, opportunity to flag whether you've dropped your markers or not. So I'm going to say yes, I dropped my marker at the fly-in. I think I got 5 metre result. I dropped that at 0745. And then finally my judge declared goal here. I think I got 10 metres. I dropped my marker at, eight, at 0800. And my fly-on will just say I got 30 metres and dropped it at 0815. Landowner for landing, I landed on a road near a shed. Okay, so once you've done that, what you're able to do at the bottom here is you can either save your flight report form. So if I save that, 
and then I come back to the home page, you'll see it still has not submitted. It shows that all the markers have dropped because I've said I've dropped them all, but I have not submitted it yet. So I can come back here, come to the bottom and then hit submit form. Once I've done that, I can see that I've got green lights for all of my three things in my checklist, so everything is complete. And now the officials can go and look after all my flight report form data and all my balloon live data. If at any stage you want to check your balloon live data, you can also come in here and click on balloon live data. And what this gives you is gives you all the information about your track. So you can see how many track points were collected. If I click on that link there, it shows each of your goal declarations and your marker drops, the longitude and latitude, the coordinates, everything, all the information that you need around those particular items. You can also download the files in an IGC format, which is the format that the Balloon Live app uses, an Aussie Explorer track file for the track line, a waypoint file which contains all of these uh, goal declarations and the marker drops. And again, you can also view the Google map of your track. So there you go. That's everything that you need to know about Watch Me Fly for your competition. Mm -hmm.